So here I am back again. Um, the reason why is because, as well as writing poems and stuff, I also write these essays. And um, yeah, I now blog for the Huffington Post. Um, some of my articles they they reject maybe because they're too controversial, which is a shame, you know. But I can read them out to you guys, you know. And um, I mean, there's just so much. There's so much of this writing and art, and you know, this is why I've now decided to to share it. This essay is called Deep in the Pit and Can't Get Out. What the hell do you do to find the light? I've been in the pit since the end of August. We are now at the beginning of November and I am not sure if or when the sun is ever going to come out. This morbid depression is sapping when you feel like there are sacks of potatoes tied to your feet and several bricks pressing upon your brain simultaneously. In my studio to my left, there is a large window. Lately, I've had the urge to climb out and jump. Right ahead of me is a large dark wooden door, and recently I noticed a hook at the top. Now I've had visualizations of hanging from it. These visions are incredibly vivid, like beautifully crafted short films. After the deed is done and my lifeless body hangs limply from the hook, my son scampers in, crying out, Mummy only to discover me before he starts to scream. This scream is shrill and rings in my head like a hammer bashing upon my skull. I won't go on about the suicidal ideation, but I will say it is daily and chronic and worse at night and in the morning especially. At first light, everything seems to be in slow motion. The act of brushing my teeth, bloody momentous, Making breakfast, like climbing a mountain and getting out of bed, can be hardest of all, because most days I simply do not want to wake up because I cannot face my life. What is the cause of this very long, drawn-out bout of blackness? Sometimes there is no why. You see, I've been here so many times before. It all began as a teenager, probably 15 or 16, I don't know. I really don't think anyone at school suspected that I was low back then. Of that tender age, I didn't understand why I was in the pit or what was happening or how to recover. All the things that I've learned over many years of dealing with these thick black moods. You get tired of it though. You accept that you are afflicted with an insidious incurable mental cancer and that there is no cure nor will there ever be one. Taking medication would be like trying to paint in the dark. I choose to live with it and right now it's hard. Very few people know about my mental health condition where I'm currently based. I'm hiding it from everyone and that's the strain. I wonder though if people are beginning to suspect. Perhaps continually wearing dark glasses and big hats is a dead giveaway that you're trying to hide something. Play dates can be tricky. There's one mother here that knows but we don't talk about it anymore. Just like all the other mothers that I previously disclosed my condition to. By and large, they choose to pretend it doesn't exist. Well, it does, and I want to die right now. I feel that way every day, every night, when I wake, when I sleep. Yes, it will pass eventually. Mood is like the weather, Stephen Fry once told me. Well, this cloud is not shifting. Pass me a pair of pliers, please, because I'm getting desperate. Except, I don't think pliers will help to shift this very stubborn cloud. Writing might, sharing might, being honest might, and not feeling ashamed is seldom ever waking up happy. Are there people out there who actually wake up happy? Maybe. Tom Cruise, perhaps. People cave in because they can't cope in this bonkers, pressurised, fast-paced world. It's the sensitive ones that go down first because the mind caves in. The walls simply can't keep out all the crap that's trying to seep in. Am I making sense? I don't know, nor do I care. I just want to say I don't feel well and I want to get better for my children's sake and stop faking it when they get home because I think I'm collapsing on the inside in the facade. How long can I keep that up?
I recently started doing acupuncture, hoping that the needles being punctured into my diaphanous skin might create a hole big enough for me to climb out of and escape the prison that is my mind right now. As I lay there, heated lamp directed on my belly and tried to do my breathing, the vision of me hanging returned. After the session, a nice Chinese man began to try and knead away the tension and knots in my back and stiff neck. Then I told him that I was low, very low, and he didn't know what to say apart from offer me some ginger tea and speak softly. Often it's simply a kind voice and someone to listen that we seek, not someone badgering us to snap out of it, dismissing all that we feel and say as glib nonsense. And I've been on the receiving end of that sort of response too. Such harshness only compounds the belief that you are the architect of this solipsistic melancholy and trapped in self-perpetuating and self-created patterns. There's something in that, I suppose. It never hurts to speak kindly and empathetically to another human being. Why am I writing all of this down? So that my children, if they are ever in the pit, they will know that their mother was in it most of her life. But she developed the tools without the aid of pills or doctors to get out. Words and art give me the strength and provide the light to guide me out of the black hole that sucks me down, down, down. I mean good company. Clap, Byron, Wolf, Rothko, Van Gogh, Monk. They all sat huddled in puddles of tar and look what they created out of the interminable darkness with their bare hands and stripped down minds. Yeah. So, essay number one. More to come. It's scary, you know, that I'm about to post that. Then the whole world will know. But, you know, it's better to come out and hide and not be ashamed because I've got nothing to be ashamed about, you know. Anyway, I don't really want to be normal, whatever normal is. You just have to accept the way that you are and and live with it and dig it. It's a ridiculous thing to say, but yeah, anyway.